And uh, the other thing I did also last week was I listened to Kamikaze three times, which was three times too many. Have you had a chance to listen to this album? Yes, I've listened to the album and Kamikaze, yes. Okay, so as far as this album here, it's kind of came out of the blue compared to Revival, which had like a release date and an announcement and advertisement and um, he did a Beyonce drop. What's that? He did a Beyonce drop like just I right, just magically popped up. Oh, everybody wakes up to a new album. Yeah, that's becoming the uh, that's becoming a thing nowadays. And in a way, I kind of like yeah, I think I prefer that nowadays as far as because yeah. if you drop it surprise and there's less likely a chance of it getting leaked there's a less anticipation because it kind of smacks you in the face like the next day. Like, mm-hmm. one, one thing I do like about it is that um, uh, I don't have to worry about hearing like the trickling out of singles. Like I can just be like, yo, where, where's the real album? Like, okay, if I do like something, I can be like, all right, I can just go ahead and start the whole album. Um, and I think I like that more than getting like one song here and then I'm questioning like yo was that part of an album is that just because they wanted to make music like what is this kind of like uh, Childish Gambino's doing right now yeah oh yeah the summer uh, that summer mix he had uh, those four tracks and yeah we talked yeah. about that a, co- or a few episodes back so with this album I'm let's see how did I have this written down I kind of went through this track by track as far as my thoughts on it and it's honestly let's see how many tracks were there total it looks like there were 13 tracks 13 tracks okay and honestly if he would have did like an ep or if he would have just did he if he just did the childish gambino route and only did four songs then this would this wouldn't be bad Unfortunately, we we got nine more songs or nine more tracks added to this, and mm-hmm. with the with that being said, the intro, the ringer, I actually liked that from what I remember, um, especially when it came across and like he's okay. just kind of like spitting bars, just going like um like just running. Um, it felt like a smack to the it felt, it smelled like a it felt like a smack in the mouth to like any and all kind of critics and all that other stuff that he had problems with regarding his last album revival and honestly if we had if he would have just not made an album and only dropped the ringer that friday Mm -hmm. i'd have thought that would have been dope in and of itself however uh we still got 12 other tracks added on here now the second track on here listed as the greatest and i would Mm -hmm. like or I would like the hook more if he would have yelled it or like in a more deep pitch or deeper tone rather than being all high pitched with it. And it just kind of came across a little, it just kind of came across a little hokey to me. And uh, so how you felt about the ringer is how I felt about the greatest. You enjoyed the greatest as an intro or as, I'm sorry, you enjoyed the greatest in general. Yes, I enjoyed the greatest in general just because I felt like it was like, hey, this is that slap to all the critics. This is that, you know, I'm back. People keep calling me, you know, one of the goats or the goat. I don't think he's the goat, but, um, you know, he could be white goat. I'm not (laughs) sure. White dude goat. Um, But I I really, I did enjoy... um, uh, I did enjoy Greatest. The Ringer I thought was cool. Um, but when they dropped Greatest, I was like, okay, we're cooking now. Okay. I could, yeah, I could see that as far as like it being one or the other. Now, this third track, uh, Lucky You featuring Joyner Lucas. I, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's kind of funny because you can tell jo- this was like a dream come true for Joyner Lucas as far as being on a track with Eminem. <laughs> Cause he was in his pocket. He was trying. He was. He had. He felt like he had something to prove on this album or on mm-hmm. this track, and I really enjoyed that. For lack of better words, hunger that was in his voice, that hunger that was in his demeanor, and all that when it came time to spit. And 
this was actually a pretty solid track honestly if it was also like a single or if it was something just that was released a few months later or a few months back or something like that like as a takeaway track Oh shit! Oh, man. Could you hear that? Yeah, I could hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Oh, did you hear the song? Yeah. What, what were you playing it on? Oh my bad. Um. Okay, I won't do that. Um. <laughs> that was all off the phone. That was on title. Oh. I oh, see. I forgot about title. Shit. Yeah. I'm, I I'm not trying to get copyright issues right now. Yeah, so that should that should be good. I just wanted to hear the beat again. Um. That was yeah. I enjoyed the beat of that. That had a nice vibe. Um, enjoyed, you know, more or less the lyrics of everything. Uh, that one was cool. I think I skipped the skit, so I have no clue what the skit is anymore. Honestly, it's funny because this skit is the entire album on a, in a nutshell. And it's basically mm. kind of, it, it's a callback to all those times where Paul Rosenberg would do a skit where he was like, it was pretty much a voicemail where he's sitting there cautioning Eminem to, hey, cut this shit out. You're sitting there, you're, you're making this a little hard. You're making my job harder. Uh, chill out with the talking about killing your wife or, t- or chill out with uh, uh, any and all the other problematic shit that he used to do back in the day. And so yeah. with this skit, it was another voicemail of Paul Rosenberg where he's sitting there talking about, so I'm kind of confused why you made this album um, as far as a response to people criticizing Revival this sounds like a slippery slope it seems like so what's what's going to happen like are you going to make another album responding to people that are criticizing your response to the criticism to revival and it was so self-aware that i am surprised that this was left on the album and if they were going to do that they should have did this after the ringer i felt like because for it to go, uh, I mean, this could have been the intro. If you're gonna do that, you could have just. Yeah. Well, no, I guess having a song, then, then that, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, but you just, yeah, that makes sense. What, what they, yeah, or honestly, they, if if you didn't want to put it as its own separate track, you could have put it at the end of the ringer. As also, it's all just one track right there, and that have mm, been, yeah. Then I felt like that would have been perfect right then and there, and that skit was just a perfect summation of this album kamikaze and then it goes into normal and this really should have could have just been cut out i um trash skipped it (laughs) (laughs) and then it goes m calls paul where he leaves a voicemail for paul rosenberg and he's in there complaining about paul complaining about Eminem complaining about yeah. the complaints about revival. So we pretty much went into like inception on this skit and it kind of shows that it's weird as far as it goes along with a lot of this album uh, as far as it's funny cuz Paul the skit with Paul's voicemail it is basically a f- uh trees for the forest or forest for the trees i forget which way it's supposed to go paul is kind of like all around for kamikaze as far as like well why are you even doing this to begin with and then m eminem is kind of more along the lines of leaving his voicemail where he's still stuck and seeing or not seeing the forest for the trees where he's just so stuck on he's so stuck on this criticism and that seems to be one of the very few things that are is really marked as adversity for him uh, at this stage of his career at this stage of his success and then it goes to track seven which is stepping stone which is a it was an odd or it was an odd track to have on here as far as basically for him to talk about d12 no longer being a group or no longer being a mm-hmm. band and i was kind of going like well this was an odd choice to have on this particular album specifically because it seemed like it kind of goes along with the title kamikaze and i'll get into that a little bit later and it seems like he's he's saying on the chorus i never meant to use you all as my stepping stone and then he's just kind of going like well i'm sorry that y'all that your careers didn't blow up 
the way they should have and maybe I should have uh, done a little bit more or I or I mean me being so stuck into my own my own world and be, yeah. being so self-absorbed that things didn't work out the way they should have or things that didn't work out the way they could have plus with proof dying things just it was pretty much the beginning of the end at that point and so there's that and like I said this was an odd choice to have on this particular album I will get into that a little bit later regarding the title and then we get into Not Alike featuring Royce to 5'9 track number 8 brought the album back to life really Yes. All right. Yes. For, I, well, for, let's let's yes, see. Let's see. These next two songs are, I think, the, the best two songs on the album. Yeah, not alike. Yeah. Um, I thought Royce did a or Royce the five nine um, did a real good job. The beat changes, and maybe it's because of the stepping stone that it goes to this. That I was like, okay, I've had enough stuff I'm not feeling. That I was like, finally something that I know is going to be, you know, um, solid or good. That's how I felt about this one. Like, the beat change. I like the beat. I was liking the raps. Um, yeah. Hmm. This was my least. What do you think? This was my least favorite track on this album. Huh. Okay. Uh, what, what put you off on it? Like, what was the thing that? Well, or just all how it all was, like just how that song is from the start. Uh, hearing this, what sounds like a direct copy of "Look Alive" with Black uh, by Black Boy J and Drake, uh, the same producer, mm-hmm. and like it's almost like, it's like a copyright free or safe version of "Look Alive." Yeah. Or like, um, you know how on TV where they sit there and play songs that they sound almost like famous songs, but it's changed just enough to avoid getting sued. That's what this felt like with me. And it was just like, I'm really not trying to see Eminem, even if he's joking, do the shoot dance. So um, I'm mad because that image was stuck in my head when this started. And... (laughs) Honestly, especially with that chorus where he's in a, a where he's pretty much making fun of a um, bad and bougie's chorus, and it was just the point. If it was supposed to be like a joke song, or if it was supposed to be like a parody or something like that, I mean, at least make it good. At least make it in some kind of way. Like I didn't feel, like I felt like they really could have been a little bit more subversive with this. They okay. could have. They could have played it. At, they could have played it off like it was an actual song. And if you listen to it, and like you could be vibing to it, and then if you think think about it or start paying attention to what they're saying, it's like, oh, hi, I see what y'all doing. You're making fun of the people that do that or that rap like this, that rap that talk about these yeah. type of shit and this that, and the other. But it was more. It just felt a little too juvenile as far as how they were playing the joke off. And I can get that. No, I, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, with Royce, I have yet to hear a bad verse from him. So hey, and he didn't fail me yet. Yeah. So he hasn't failed me yet. So yeah. for me, this was like the way you say it. I can see why you would, you could you would take it as like, or you would actually feel that this is possibly the worst song on the on the um al- album like towards like you you liked or disliked. Uh, yeah, this is the song that I was like, wait, wait, run that back one more time. <laughs> I want to hear that again. Uh. Now, this, so, yeah, so those are my thoughts on Not Alike. I, the, the quicker we can move on from that one, the better for me. Okay, what did you think about Kamikaze? The name, the, the, the feature, you know, the, the title song. Now, see, will. this is weird because on Spotify did me, kind, kind of threw me off a little bit. Because I looked at the track mm-hmm. list elsewhere, and Kamikaze played before Fall on Spotify, but on any of the tr- any of the track lists elsewhere that I was looking at, Fall goes before Kamikaze, and I'm very confused. Like so. So on title, it has Kamikaze then Fall. Okay then. All right. Well then. Well, see, that's weird because the album cover. 
the album cover did the exact same thing. It had Kamikaze um, before Fall. Then we're going with that. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll take that back. I'm sorry. I I messed up. I'm sorry. Fall was before Kamikaze on the album cover that I looked at. Excuse me. I'm sorry. On Spotify, Kamikaze was showing before Fall. So we'll just go by that. Um, so since that's what you're showing on title, that's what you're, that's what I see on Spotify. Um, but regardless. Oh, okay. So the unedited version, Fall comes before Kamikaze. I mean, sorry, sorry, sorry. The edited version, Fall comes before the Kamikaze. The explicit version, Kamikaze is before Fall. That is, why would they do that? Not sure. That now that is, I am not sure, but I'm looking at it. It shows both versions, and so you you're not crazy. That's that's something real. Um, that is weird. Huh. I'm, all right. Well. All right. Well. Fuck it. As far as um kamikaze, that chorus, uh like the smash and the bash and the crash and all that other stuff. And it was, right. I was like, all right, whatever, and. Ironically, that was the least. Uh, I mean, it was the least remarkable, or one of the least remarkables. Or I, I almost without that smash, crash, and bash, I would have straight up forgot about this track on this album. <laughs> um. So for me, I was basically like M's just doing M stuff. Yeah. Okay. I was like, I'm not really gonna go too deep into it. it's just M spazzing a bunch of stuff together and like boom all right yeah that's that's literally how i took kamikaze i was just like i critique this like other m songs where he's just like spazzing on a track mm-hmm. and sometimes he's with the beat sometimes he's not and you're just like i take whatever imagery and content and go okay all right all right okay all right all right he, he did his thing um. Yeah, like as we're reviewing the CD, I thought I was gonna give it a higher. We haven't even finished the last couple of tracks, but I thought <laughs> I was gonna give it a higher uh, score than what I'm about to give it today. Yeah, um, it's funny because I was actually gonna give it a work. Like, luckily we took this week off because I was going to give this a much worse rating than what I'm going to do now. I was, I've never. Oh. It's funny, like, I've never, I, it's been, I, to my knowledge, I have yet to give an album a trash rating, but this you album, a trash for me, I, I've, I, I would have gave it gold. Well, see, hold on, like, this album is, te- was teetering on that line as far as being a yeah. trash album, and oh, it was just such a disappointment in the fact that this was a surprise album it's called Kamikaze everybody on the internet was sitting there talking about oh he's taking shots at Charlemagne. oh he's taking shots at Joe Budden he's taking shots at Drake Machine Gun Kelly Lil Pump etc etc and then when you listen to it and as far as him okay let me get into let me let me put this out there before I forget it when you think of the word Kamikaze what do you think of uh, um, someone killing, also killing themselves in the process, like a suicide mission. Okay. And what would you say was the purpose of Kamikaze? Of this album, or people doing Kamikaze? The like the general ver- the general version of Kamikaze. Um, to destroy something else. I'm not sure how you're trying to ask me that. All right, okay. I think of historian like, like basically, to get the job done, you have to sacrifice yourself. Okay, so you're kind of along. You're kind of. You actually that is what this album's about. If that's what you're asking, like okay, I don't feel see, like you're going where I'm going. Any of that has to do with this album. Like I don't feel like he destroyed anybody. I don't feel like he brought up enough of skeletons in the closet. Like he buried it all and was like, okay. Let me lay waste to everything as I, you know, have to destroy myself in the process to do it. 
you are going in the direction that I was hoping this was going to go. Now, with Kamikaze, the thing, the first thing that comes to mind for me is Pearl Harbor. Uh, they, as far as the Japanese attacking uh, Pearl Harbor, they, okay. the main general uh, or admiral, excuse me, knew for a fact this was a bad idea to uh, to attack the U.S. as far as them getting involved. And as you see upon later events, yeah, it was a it, yeah, shit escalated. Now, as far as <laughs> As far as the attack on Pearl Harbor, uh, Kamikaze was occur- or had occurred several times on or with the fighter pilots, and it was mm-hmm. more of an honorable thing to do, as far as to destroy your enemies in the same or if you are on your way out and you're not going to make it. As a matter of fact, a lot of fighter pilots weren't going to make it, and so they decided to as an uh, their version of an honorable way to go out would be to take as many as they could with them now so, so when you when you say that I, I thought of pearl harbor but i also think of suicide bombers that's what i think of as uh like people who you know do basically suicide bombings they don't call it kamikazes anymore mm-hmm. um but that's kind of the same thing for their you know culture or belief or whatever um, cause they are basically destroying something else but they know they're gonna have to like they're not coming out of it alive like they right. know like okay I did all I could now before my last breath I try to take out as many as I could right and you know it kind of yeah. seems yeah and they're in the person committing the suicide's eyes they view they viewed what they're doing as honorable and just yes. kind of like this was their purpose this was their goal now with Eminem titling this as Kamikaze, this felt more like a person throwing a tantrum and going, if I'm going down to be ridiculed, I'm taking every one of y'all some bitches with me. And it felt kind of juvenile, especially for him to be at, his, at the age that he is, especially for him to be at this level of his career, to be viewed as one of the greatest lyricists there are. Um, he was like... You know, in my, I would say he's in my top three. I used to view him oh, as a greatest lyricist. Yeah, I would sit there and as um, I used to have you view him as one of my influences when it came to or back when country noise was around. Um, okay. you know, and for you know holding him in such a high regard, and uh, to yeah. see how to that. <laughs> well, okay, and to see the level that internet people have gotten to him at this stage at this level and for him to kind of lash out like he did in such a way over a very mediocre album at that now if people were sitting there saying this shit about the Eminem show or the Marshall Mathers LP or something like that then like you know coming back to it and revisiting it and the center just all of a sudden trashing it I could probably understand the reason for him to go out like or to just kind of lash out like he did mm-hmm. and barely even that because hell he's rich off of it he's i mean i don't know about set for life but he's solidified himself as far as if there was a hall of fame for rap he'd be in there like probably first ballot I'll give you that yes i will i will i'm down yeah for the hall of fame he he's in there for sure first ballot he should be first ballot oh excuse me and so for him to sit there and just kind of like as i was saying for him to lash out like this over revival and it's just kind of such a weird way to respond like if he had just you know we did we don't need 13 tracks of you being upset that we didn't get the lyricism or being upset that we felt we know that you can do better than revival and it was such a weird thing for him to also agree. Like he also agreed that revival was trash, but he's mad at people for saying that revival is trash in a way. Maybe it's kind of like along them lines where, um, Fonte said this one time. I, I, I'm trying to remember if he said it in a song, but I do remember it in a tweet where he was sitting there going like, it was kind of like one of them situations where, um, I can say that my kid is dumb, but don't you dare sit there and say, tell me that my kid is dumb. Uh, okay. 
I, I got you on that. If you say it that way, yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you there. I'm in a way, there. I'm kind of, I'm I, in a way like the now that I'm got fight about it. Yeah, now that I've had a week to kind of sift through my feelings on this album, I'm a little <laughs> more, I'm a little more reserved as far as how I feel about it. And I was like, dude, I was so it, highly upset that weekend when I was listening to this. Yeah, I don't think you said anything back that weekend. I think I was commenting more. Mm. Um, on the album, and if we if we would have recorded that weekend, I would have gave it go. Okay. I would have gave it go. That's how I felt overall from the feelings from the album. Okay, and with this, I was teetering on giving this a trash. I was really debating on giving this a trash. Dang, however, yeah, as however, like you you don't understand like how emotional I was, and I just listened to this like what the fuck am i listening to right now i got you but you have him as top three lyricists like lyricists as personal personal top three yeah that's what i'm saying like as a personal like mm-hmm. you have him like so that's almost like um um you, that would be like you know if i if i was listening to lupe and lupe dropped something and was like yo what what the fuck is this <laughs> what are we doing you know what i'm saying Cause right. like because i'm gonna rate lupe a whole lot harder that I'm gonna be Eminem, like Eminem. I think he's in top ten, but like now, no, I am saying lyricists as compared to rappers too. So obviously there is a difference. Obviously, um, we'll have yeah. to probably get into that further, uh, further on. We, yeah, but we do a whole actually, debate on that a little bit later. But yeah. for me, he in my personal list, he's not there. I get not that. Top three. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. You know. So. So I'm not even mad. You you feel you know you felt it a little bit more. Like me, I was like, oh, he finally came back. And then I realized it took him six, what, six years? Six, seven years? I have to look at the uh, discography to see. Cause, well, if, yeah. if let's say if MG, uh, was it Machine Gun Kelly, MGK. Oh. If he was right in his devil rap, then it took him six years to finally do a diss song back. And that I cannot allow. Okay, so you're actually leading into yeah, you're leading into fall, the next track that we were going to talk about. Yes, fall. which we were trying to figure out where it was placed on apparently the censored or uncensored version. So yeah, with fall, that's where the real, that's where the real drama comes into play, as far mm-hmm. as he fires off at Joe Budden, fires off at Lord Jamar, fires off at Machine Gun Kelly, Charlemagne, etc. And I, let me get this stupid point out the way. With that chorus, I for real, the first time I heard it, I for real thought he was saying, don't fart on my face. <laughs> Honest to God. I kept, I'm sitting there looking at the title. I'm sitting there looking at the title while he was, while the singing was going on. And I'm, st- and I was like, every time he start, I would keep hearing, don't fart on my face. And hopefully now you won't be able to unhear it either. So I gotta listen to the song again. Now. <laughs> don't fall on Everybody my face. Everybody, go out and listen to Fall. <laughs> if you at this point, pause it, go listen to Fall, and then come back and see if you come up with uh, "Don't Fart on Your Face." Uh, so with this, as far as the shots that he took, it was kind of it. it once again, it's just a repeating theme, a recurring theme of, oh, y'all didn't like this album? Well, fuck you. And um, that's why you, yeah, I like with Joe Button, it was like, last time you had hits is when you were sitting there, uh, when you beat up your uh, your girlfriend. And that was one, an accusation. It wasn't proven from what I remember. Yeah. And two, I mean, is that really the kind of line you want to throw at somebody when you yourself have made songs about killing your ex-wife and like, beating bitches and uh beating gay let's, people etc let's pause right there let's pause right there all right i was just talking to uh jedi i was talking to jacob uh, a couple days ago and me and him yeah, shout out we to jedi. left the gym and we talking eminem i asked me because he's a huge eminem fan like huge okay and i was like yo eminem's albums aren't aging well with me they're not they're not aging well at all with me mm-hmm. um like he i go back and i listen to that album and i was like he got kim on there like the Kill Kim song? Yeah, I remember. Oh, well, yeah. It's, it's, that song it's... is atrocious. Like, I tried to listen huh. to it again, and I couldn't do it. Like, I was like, nope. No. Yeah. 
it's funny because like Hell going no. yeah, it's funny because going back to these like I was actually kind of transported back to when I first heard Eminem as like my name is and I remember like mm-hmm. I'm on like leaving elementary school on my way to middle school a summer program or like some sort of summer program where yeah I won't get into that okay but anyway um fuck yeah, that fuck people. that program yeah, yeah. yeah kids are kids are shitty anyway um yes <laughs> and so it's kind of funny it's like you know what Eminem was perfect music for that age group like that middle school high school range rebellious finding yeah. the world trying to make your own name yeah like fuck you mom and uh, yeah suck my dick and etc cetera, etc cetera. and just kind of gotcha. like oh i can't believe he said that and it's yeah it's kind of funny how he held that that's an easy market to sit there and appeal to and an easy market to sit there and kind of like you know wrap your finger around and i don't know, like in a way he still has some dope ass lines. He still has some dope ass rhymes and tracks, but it's funny how, like, as far as, for lack of better words, his gimmick around that time period was kind of more like a shock jock, in a way. Yes, yes. And you know, kind of like almost in a sense, like, oh yeah, he also mentioned Tyler the Creator on this album, um, mm-hmm. and talking and like that just reminded me, like Tyler the Creator also started off as kind of like with shock rap. But he's kind yes. of, but he's definitely evolved by leaps and bounds from that era, especially oh, when he began. Yeah, especially with, is nice now. Like, yeah, his no. lyrics and production, and it's just yes, um, which surprised me that he got to this level in in a sense. Yeah, um, not because I didn't think that he could have that type of talent, but because when I first saw him, I know Gary was like, "Yo, you need to check this cat," and I would look at the videos and be like, "No." Mm. No, like I no, I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't get the madness. I don't. I don't know. So my question to you, for fall, did this fall flat for you, or was it a fall forward? How did it work for you? Fall was a fart for me. Now I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> now nah, with this one, it was like I said, back to those skits where people are trying to reason with them, and you know. The people that he's getting on, with the exception of Lord Jamar, who is kind of a hater in the in the gen, in the most general sense, uh, he doesn't like white rappers to begin with. So, with the exception oh. of with the exception of Lord Jamar, the people that were talking about revival gave some valid criticism. Some of it constructive, some of it just kind of shocked and like a damn, I'm a fan. So, like this is kind of a this is not the kind of album that i would expect from you or this is not the this is not what i'm trying to hear from you and so for him to kind of just lash out and sit there and just take little shots at those people uh machine gun kelly six years late according to rap devil um with joe button uh trying to take shots at him as far as his domestic or alleged domestic issues and here you are with your own domestic issues uh alleged and so and then with Tyler the Creator, um, pretty much calling him like it got censored on both versions of the album, but he pretty much called him the equivalent of a pile of sticks. Mm. Did you oh did you, did you catch that part? You know what this 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 uh, this whole track falls flat as hell to me. Mm. I think I went and started doing dishes when I heard this song. Oh, did you like break one of them? It made me want to go clean up something just oh. so I can wait till the song was done. Oh, okay. It was just like, <laughs> it was this music that make you want to just like find something to do. No, not in a good way. Mm. Like, to be more disrespectful besides skipping the song, I would have ran the vacuum mm. until the song ended. Damn. And then turned the vacuum off for the next song. Okay, well, you're like, more critical of it than I thought I would, or than I was, yeah. Uh, yeah, like, no. Did I leave no, the oven on? This, it's like you you don't have the oven on. I'm gonna turn it on and then just uh, go back to it so I can make sure it's off. Yeah, like that's that's how I feel. Like I started washing dishes. Like I was like, okay, um, let me turn on the water. Oh, the beat changed. All right, I'm done with dishes. And I listened to whatever the hell the next song was. Oh, um, well maybe you should have kept that water running because um, the track after that oh, was it didn't get better. Was nice guy by Jesse Reyes Reyes. Or Reyes, Reyes, most likely it's Reyes. Yeah. Um, uh, next two songs are by same yes. person. 
Yes. Now with Nice Guy, she like as far as that chorus, she sounded like a discount Gwen Stefani. <laughs> um, and that entire chorus was uh, that was fucking annoying. Um, uh, for yeah. her to sit there and just kind of go like it was pretty much like a pretend karaoke or pretend drunk karaoke, and then it goes into the suck my dick part where and it's just like really and just listening to this and honestly I was luckily this was not a long song this was barely two minutes at that and then it goes into the better version called Good Guy featuring Jesse Reyes Mm -hmm. and I enjoyed this way more than uh, Nice Guy especially when it seemed like he actually was speak he was actually the what he was talking about was more was less vindictive and less bitter compared to Nice Guy. It actually felt like yep. he was actually talking about some more personal shit. And uh, as far as that, it almost seemed like it was a beat change. And I had to look, and I thought these were two tracks, or I thought these two tracks were all one track, which would have made a lot more sense, being like Nice Guy than Good Guy, especially if you got the same person on there and it's almost the same theme. And what should have happened yep. is like first it should have played nice guy and then it switched over to good guy and then the track ended. Now, anything else to add with those two tracks? Nope. Okay. Nope. <laughs> so that would have been a bad way to end the album had it just been on nice guy, good guy. What now? Track 13, Venom. Music from the motion picture. Mm-hmm. Uh, question. What motion picture? Oh, well, I mean, I think it was pretty obvious what motion picture. But my no, question. I thought you were saying which motion picture. I thought you were saying question like. Oh, like, here's, you, here's my question. Pause. Here's my question. Mm-hmm. Why is this on Kamikaze? Shit, I don't know. He can't put it nowhere else. Right. I mean, like, obviously, the, I would imagine there's going to be a soundtrack for Venom. Why? 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 Why put that on this? He had nothing else. Like, he was like, well, I just dropped like three duds in a row. Let me mm. let me go ahead and just put something, a, a potential, you know, like, hey, leading on to the next one. I will be found in some future stuff. Yeah. Honestly, like if we if this was taken off the album and like I said, this was like a he dropped the ringer. Um, maybe. Yeah, if he had, would have just dropped the ringer, shut people up and then came out with Venom when it was closer to the time for the movie to come out, then. OK, I'm, I, I can rock with that. But as far as Venom being on here and it was it was such a. It still it sticks out like a sore thumb. One being like, yes, who does? It's unnecessary. Yeah, that's like um, if uh, hold on, what's the most recent soundtrack? Okay, Future. He was like an executive producer for the Superfly remake. Mm-hmm. That would have been like if he took a song. That would have been if he made a song called Superfly, and put it on. Uh, fucking Dirty Sprite three or some shit. <laughs> like it, it's like we know what you're trying to do. Why are you doing it here? Like, why aren't you taking this elsewhere? That makes it. It's I don't know. It kind of reeks of um. A little well, commercial. Maybe I, fuck it. I'll say commercialism. It just kind of reeks of like some cross promotion. It's just like I. That's. Is that really the point of this album here? Uh, why are we Why are we doing this on Kamikaze? He just had to leave on some kind of positive note, like, "Hey, also, I'm going to be doing the Venom album. Hey, I'm going to do some of the Venom soundtrack." And he's like, "All right, to, you know, kind of like this album should have had to be continued at the end." <laughs> this should have had less than thirteen tracks. I'll say that. This album was a fart. That's all I'm gonna say. This okay. album as a whole was, was a fart on your face. And I'm glad we after the week that we took you know, since we didn't record that week, yeah, my feelings on this album have drastically changed. As have I mine. There are a lot more I've calmed down a lot more compared to 
listening to it that weekend. I'm right. overall. I've already said what I've already said my feelings about this overall. Once we got to the title track, so the, mm-hmm. just going straight to the rating, I'm giving this a bronze. So you went from uh, trash to bronze. I was teetering. I was teetering between oh, was teetering between trash, between trash, trash and bronze. bronze. Between trash and bronze, and now that I've had some time to to chill out and just kind of listen, and afterwards. Gotcha. I still, this is still leaps and bounds better than Revival. All right. And like, it was funny so. because I think that's what stopped me from marking it as trash that week to begin with. I was like, I really want to give this trash, but this is so much better than Revival. Like, Revival was that fucking bad. And I gave that a bronze if I remember. I'll have to go back and listen to that episode. <laughs> um, so, so, I, I yeah. So these, what I would give this this album is bronze as well. Wow, you went it, from that was a huge had, drop for you because you, I at least had one. I I've just only went up one rank. You dropped two. <laughs> yes, because after all the smoke was set, right, and I tried to listen to it again, and I realized I was just like skipping to Royce Five and Nine and Kamikaze. It was like, all right, the album. It's 13 tracks, and there's only two, maybe three songs that I care to hear from. So that means 10 other ones I would rather skip or not hear ever. And there are skits that I don't want to listen to again, and there are whole songs that I wish they were just a fart. They could have just played fart tracks, and it would have been better. So this is getting the bronze for me. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, it was neat to have him come back. Uh, I will say that him coming back, I was like, oh yeah, I like I like some of the production. I like this and that. But I've not went back to it. I've had to force myself to go back to it. And then I realized, like, there wasn't very many highlight verses or moments from this album to me. Like, they just, like, off the top, stick out, like, stick, stick in my head, like, okay, he said that phrase, oh my, you know, that was crazy line, this and that, and I would almost, I, I can't give it a trash, because it actually had, you know, I, the production was alright, um, it was classic Eminem stuff, to me it was classic Eminem stuff, like, he makes a few, you know, uh, you know, a couple of songs turn into something catchy, uh, he spazzes about some random stuff, and, you know, occasionally I'll have a team up with somebody and you'd be like, oh, OK, OK, I'm feeling that, or at least for me. So I gave him bronze. I went from gold to bronze. <laughs> and, um, yeah, he needs to do better. And basically, I felt like this whole album was basically to stir the pot so he could make a bunch of just like fake beefs and maybe do some beef tracks or maybe maybe come out with another album yeah but i think he's gonna do more with beef tracks than this album okay i would be cool with that if you know i mean obviously that kind of sparked a lot of white boy rage between uh eminem machine gun kelly and g easy uh but he's like he's like grandpa white boy rapper like he like compared to the rest of them like yeah og he's been in so long like og white boy rapper yeah uh, well, I mean, with the exception of, with the exception of, I put some respect. With the exception of like know. a MC Search or um, or a Vanilla Ice, or um, or um, what are the names? House of Pain. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Or um, well, hold on. I was about to say I was about to throw Snow in the mix, but nah, that was that was a fake. That was a white boy reggae. <laughs> I mean, he is a battle rapper. There's a dude named Snow as a oh. battle rapper. Well, see, I was talking about Snow. No, I was talking about like in, Informer Snow. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, yeah. So, Licky Boom Boom Down. Anyway. <laughs> it was cool hearing Machine Gun Kelly rap again. Um, but truthfully, this this album is going to go go basically in the same box there. Revival went. Um. Yeah, I'm good without it. Like, cool. Thank you. Well, no, no. Thank you for dropping a new album. If he does another album, just don't 
don't put out no songs, no tracks, just drop a whole album. Um, and yeah, so he got bronze. He got bronze. Yeah. Well, so there's that. That's all I remember. It's one. Hey.